Well, we're in here to test our new hitch, folks. I cut this one down there, the top. He looked uh, pretty much done for. He is a little green, I guess, but look how badly it was rotted. It's already starting on its way out. Look at that one. You see the ice ring around the outside where it was frozen and the inside it's all starting to go punky. Still pretty heavy though. It is 16 inches on the butt and it doesn't taper down too, too fast. I guess it's fast enough though, but what do we have here? We have one, two, three, four, five pieces cut, right Heather? Five pieces. We are going to try to load on this sleigh. That's the smallest one right here. Where did I cut that one? Right there by the saw. We're gonna see if we can get these loaded and haul them out. So eight, 16, 32, 40 feet long here. Yeah, so that'll give us some good, uh, good material. Well, I think that's all we're going to be able to pull, to be honest with you, it is heavy. That one, uh, we didn't bother loading it. We just hauled, we're just gonna load four of them on here. Those things got away, I'll bet you 400 pounds or more each, right? They're heavy. <laughs> So, I bet you it's close to 1,100 pounds there. Pretty close. I'm going to see where, if I can get going. I did drop this hitch down one lower. It's not right in the top because I was trying to pull my front end up in the air when I took off. I'm going to pass this off to Heather and let's see if I can even get going. Once I get going, Heather, I'm not stopping, okay? Yeah, just keep going. Yeah. Unless I hit the bottom of the hill. Once I hit the bottom of the hill, if I can't make it up, then obviously I'll be stopped. know if I can make the hill but once I hit the bottom of that hill uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be right to the bar going across that bridge so we'll see what happens either I lose the whole back of my machine <coughs> or I make it up there so wow. should I wait um, um no, just follow me down uh, if you have to you can go around me a bit there yeah, if I can't make it I'm just gonna unload some of it off the trail anyways and get what I can up well do you want me to just follow be me right behind you so uh, I not too no I don't want you slamming in Heather in case you bust the front of your machine okay I'll either make it or I won't all right. I'm going to hammer that throttle so hard there, okay. I don't know what's going to be left of the sled <laughs> in, the, in the back of the machine when I get to the top, but we'll see. Okay. It'll be interesting. Good luck, Godspeed. What's that? <laughs> Good luck and Godspeed. Yeah. We got it to here and then I went, uh, now uh, I put another I put another belt on there. It was brand new and I had for a while now. Um, and he brought out the tool and we pulled the secondary off and I lubed that up. The buttons are all good in it, everything's good in it, but it was really, really dry and I put a little more wrap on the spring. The secondary is supposed to have about 10 pounds, I think, or 12 pounds. 
and I went about 22, 24 on that secondary, and now I'm telling you it pulls good. But I need another spacer on there because what's happening when it's when it's running, it tries to idle away. So I'm going to go pop that off right away. And then I'm going to go at my primary as well tonight on that snowmobile, see if I can get that working. So I will take you up there and I will show you the tool I use to take the secondary apart. Okay, well, let's pull this apart here. This comes off. This folds up. I even got my compression tester and I checked it. And in each cylinder, I have about 120, 122 when it's cold, but here's the thing. I only have about 110 when it's hot. So maybe a set of rings, I'm not sure. I took the breather box off as well. Uh, I'm gonna see how it is like that for a while. Seems to be a lot better. See how much higher that, that belt sits. But now my primary in here, it's got a real bad groove on it. So I have to fix that groove. I figured it's about time I went at this and uh, got this thing running right. So I'm gonna pop the belt off, I'll be right back. Try to prop this somewhere, somewhere here for you folks. Somewhere it's not going to fall. And I'll show you how I prop these clutches off here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this without this all falling, but we're going to see. Um, now for this, what I do is I just bang it back and forth. There, just like that. <laughs> And it just slides right off. Now there's a spacer here I don't want to lose. Now I'll see you inside. Okay, I hope that is showing up, folks. So basically what you do, I've had this off already and it was stiff to get off. What I really want to do is I just want to mark that. Sorry about that. I want to find a marker and just put a mark right across so I can roughly line that up where it come off of because I do like where it's set right now That's gonna slide. Okay, so here Here and I want here roughly if I can get that Hopefully that don't uh, Rub off because I like that that is set pretty good pressure. I have had this all off already today And I am going to there was a whole lack of shims in there too much, too much for me. I didn't like the way it was pulling. Now I just had my snap ring pliers. I set them right here. Okay, so with that said, these snap ring pliers just go right in here. Um, I'm gonna take some pressure off that. It is better with two people unless I mount this on the floor, but uh, okay, that has to be pushed down there a bit. There we go. See that turning? Now that should come off pretty darn easy. There that snap ring pliers off. You see that spinning? See that's right up. Now very simple to take that apart. Lift this up. Now I'm going to drop one more of these shims right here. That's what they are, one of these shims. They just get dropped right down in here. Now there is a dominant spline on this as well. So that's something you have to watch for. Now this here, I want to stick this in the strongest hole. They are numbered inside too, so when I wrap that, that will be pretty strong. Now this here, okay, there is a dominant spline and it is right here. So, it's better today I had uh, another person here helping me, but that's neither here nor there. So what I gotta do, is I gotta drop this down on this here. Let's stick it on this, this one here. This is the hardest one here. This will be the tightest one. Now that dominant spline, sorry I gotta get in the way folks. Um, it has to get turned somewhere there. Where does that go now? 
Okay, folks, I'm sorry you missed that. I didn't realize the camera was out of uh, memory. So what I will do is I'll just, you just basically push this down. And you just take this clip off here. For anybody who wants to adjust their clutch, that comes right out of there. And then this here, you lift this up. And then this here is going to unwrap on you. So what I do, it's better if you have two people. But what I do is I just turn this here. I grab the bottom. I let it up just enough where I can spin that by hand without uh, letting the whole thing roll here. There we go. I wrap that up a bit. And then I push that down and then I will put the clip on there and I will see if it's tight enough. So if my arm's in the way. Now, see I line this yellow up. But this yellow I marked in here because it was nice and tight today. So that's all it did. So you basically just pop this clip off. Boom. This comes up, it turns, and then when you put it together, you just preload the spring. Now I'm gonna see if that's enough spacer. If not, I'm going to bring it back in, undo it, put another spacer on it. We'll see. Okay, well, it's just a matter of sliding this clutch back on now. That just goes down into here. There's no snow in there, that's good. Now that just gets turned on like this. And then this one's a little stiffer than some of them I've found. There, it's all the way on. Now, I just grab this bolt, thread this in there. Now, if it still seems like it wants to drive ahead, and then add another spacer to it, that's all. Until I get it right. And then I'm going to go out my secondary short, or my primary shortly. And I'm going to fix that. Sorry, the tool dropped. Now, I'm not going to tighten this up too, too much tonight. It's just driving the machine back, but that's okay. I'll put the belt on and I'll be right back. Well, one shim did it. Now, you see how high that is? That's sticking up there fairly good. That's just over an eighth of an inch proud of that secondary. And there's still a bit of slop there. There's still a bit of play, which is good. Now, I'll show you how this works now. I can actually shift gears with it now. When I did it earlier with just one uh, shim in it, it wasn't enough. So I had to add two shims to this wore out old machine. Sorry about the shaking here. I gotta get this camera set right for you folks. Now you watch how this works, you'll see. hill now you know they won't they find it hard to go into gear anyway because there's pressure on it i think that's going to be good folks anyways i'm going to go at that primary clutch in the morning right away because it's getting dark i'm going to go at that primary in the morning the one on the engine and i'm going to clean that up and adjust it i'll pull it off but this one here now see that belt still sits up here just over an eighth of an inch proud of that that Prime, that secondary what that does is it puts it in a lower gear basically and the belt here is still not that tight I mean uh, be before before I could take the belt and I could turn it right inside that secondary it would slip and that's where I was getting that noise it sounded like the chain was slipping inside it wasn't a chain it was the belt slipping inside the secondary I kind of suspected that but I wasn't sure until I borrowed my friend's tool and uh Pull that off and that's when I found out the problem so anyways folks I'm slowly getting it that's it for this evening and uh, we will talk to you tomorrow morning bye bye